beautiful haircut. This is going to be a very special edition of my live stream because today we're talking about some very colorful stuff. We're talking about some very colorful stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about my favorite rainbow themed spectral analyzer and that is the Pure Analyzer Essential from Flux. Uh, this analyzer is uh, very, very colorful, and it will help you to understand what's going on in your mix. It'll help you to understand the different frequencies, their phase relationships, all kinds of good stuff. So I'm going to switch over to the camera view here now that you've gotten a load of my fabulous haircut. Uh, and yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about the Pure Analyzer. Okay, so what I've done here is I've gotten three different masters of three of my tracks, and uh, they're running through the master here, and on the master there is this sample grabber plugin, which is feeding the Pure Analyzer system. So the Pure Analyzer system, I'll just uh, make the window a little bit smaller here make the window a little bit smaller so that I can uh, see what I'm doing. Um, so the Pure Analyzer system is really cool. Uh, there's several different areas and there's a lot of different parameters that you can manipulate on these areas. So I'll just introduce you to them one at a time and we're going to start with my track shine. So I've, I've key mapped these three different tracks to three different solo buttons so we'll be able to, to look at them each individually. Um, but what we're going to do first, um, I'm actually I'm going to turn down my system volume so that it doesn't interfere with the mic. Um, okay, so what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to listen to these tracks and uh, we're going to learn first about the spec. Well, let's just learn about uh, Flux and how, you know, how it visualizes things. And then I'll show you some things that you can notice about it. So we're going to start with my track Shine. Uh, let's go back to the beginning here. Okay, cool. Okay, so now to route audio into Flux, you have to use the Sample Grabber plugin and then change the input. So right away here, we can see that there's a lot going on. Here in this uh, the spectrum section here, we can see the different frequencies are uh, left to right. No, I'll turn the volume down on my thing. So the different frequencies are going left to right, and then there's the amplitude of those different frequencies on the vertical axis. So uh, I've tweaked a couple settings to make it a little bit easier to kind of see and understand what's going on. Um, so this, this spectrum analyzer uh, is going to give us a picture of the overall shape of the different frequencies. Right, so you can see this part of the song has more highs, so there's no lower frequencies. And then there's this, this, this kind of time delay that's really helpful for seeing the dynamics. So then this is the spectrum here. We've got the frequencies going left to right. The amplitude is represented by the, intensi the intensity of the color. And then time makes it go back that way. Then over here on the left, we've got the phase correlation meter. A one-to-one -one phase correlation would mean a mono signal. And then a negative phase correlation would be very stereo. That's not necessarily bad. It's just very stereo because stereo is basically, you know, a difference between the left and the right. And then here at the bottom, this is this is my favorite, and this is pretty unique to Flux. This is the stereo spread of the different frequencies. It's really, really cool, um, and you don't really get that in a lot of different, uh, you don't really get that in a lot of other analyzers. So now, um, let's go over here, and we'll get some pink noise and some white noise. So I'm gonna get some white noise first. Um, let's get a sample of white noise. I think there's a sample called White Noise RX. Yeah, let's get that one in there. And then I'll just um, loop that and kind of spread it through. Um, turn that warping on, turn loop on, I'll spread it through. So now white noise, what white noise is, is it's basically all of the frequencies equally. And that looks like this. So white noise is uh, cool, but on a big sound system, white noise hurts because there's a lot of kind of harsh highs in the white noise, and it's not really um, it's not really pleasant on a big system. However, pink noise 
I'll just get some pink noise. There we go, some pink noise. Um, so pink noise is actually a little bit more relevant because pink noise rolls off the high frequencies kind of gradually uh, and it has a curve that looks like this. So, the, so pink noise, pink noise is a lot closer to the sort of a, a frequency distribution that you would want in say a mix down or a pop record. So a lot of people will use pink noise to kind of label the frequencies, right? So the shape that you want is basically coming down six dB per octave uh, with a big lump here in the lows. And the lows are generally like, you know, especially if you're making electronic music, we all know the kick and the bass are really important. So you want the shape of your mix down to have like a big bump in the lows with the, the uh, maximum volume of the sub at around minus six. And then uh, pretty much after about 100 hertz, you want the pink noise shape. So look out for that shape in my mix downs. Here, I'll go to my track, Open Your Eyes. This is one of my favorite tracks. And let's just see what that looks like. All right, so here we go. And so you can see this nice big uh, lump in the low frequencies. And then this frequency spectrum is much more akin to pink noise. And you can see there's, there's not really anything that sticks out of the frequency spectrum. There's not really that many big peaks sticking out. And that's gonna give the mix down a nice sort of a natural feel. Uh, and then you can see that the width is kind of like a Christmas tree shape. That's really what you're looking for. You don't really want a lot of width below 200 hertz because that can sometimes cause problems on a big system. It's not like a rule that you can't have width in the lows, um, but too much width in the very, very, very bottom in the sub bass can cause phase interference. Because like on a 5.1 or a 7.1 surround system, the point one means there's only one channel of subs. You don't normally have like a surround spatially panned sub. You can, there are tipper tracks that have wide subs and he's managed to pull it off. Um, so, you know, all the rules are meant to be broken, but as a general rule, you want basically below, uh, below about 100 hertz to be mono and then a nice wide spread between about 200 and 800 and then tapering up to the top. A lot of people like to spread the highs, but I find too much spread in the highs sounds a little bit distracting. You might be going for that. Sometimes you might want to have like a really wide uh, spread in the highs if you want the mix to sound really unnatural and weird. You know, there's sometimes is a, is a role for that. But usually you want to have like a kind of a Christmas tree shape here in uh, the, the spread. With, so it's got like a, a mono stem and then wide low mids tapering to more narrow again up in the very, very highs. Um, so yeah, let's just check out my track here. Open your eyes and I'll play it loud and you can look at the meters and admire how beautiful they are. And uh, you can look out for those two shapes that I just told you about. Let's do another one. This is a remix that I did for Closey. So once again, look at those two shapes. And um, these are, you know, some of my better mix downs. So look for those two shapes. You want the Christmas tree shape on the left in terms of the spread of the spectrum. And then on the right, you want that nice big bump in the bottom, followed by a kind of pink noise type frequency distribution dropping 6 dB per octave going up the spectrum. All right, here we go.
So on this track, you can see there's a little bit more of a bump around the snare. I kind of decided that I wanted that snare to stick out a little bit more because it really kind of anchors the rhythm. But yeah, so real easy to understand, real easy to kind of see what's going on, real easy to use. And I find this thing is just an indispensable tool. I have it, uh, I have it going basically all the time on a second monitor up here at the top. I have it going the entire time I'm producing. And really just by following those simple shapes, like Christmas tree on the left, and then on the right you want a big mountain for the sub, followed by a 6 dB kind of taper off, um, you know, copying the spectrum of pink noise essentially and if you just do those two things and make sure that everything looks right on the scopes your tracks will sound great your mixes will sound good and if you want anything to stick out of the mix then you'd kind of break those rules a little bit but as long as everything kind of follows that pink noise sort of a pattern and you've got that sort of a Christmas tree shape where it's like mono in the lows wide in the low mids going to taper it up at the top um, your stereo spread will sound great and uh, you know if you have that big mountain in the lows followed by a pink noise taper your frequency spectrum will sound great and that'll make everything blend in and sound like a unit and then if you want things to kind of come apart and sound less like a unit um, then yeah have things stick out of that shape but yeah so um, flux pure analyzer system an indispensable tool I use it all the time I could not endorse it more fully it is the jam all right lots of love everybody thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time peace <laughs>